And now we can begin. So today we're looking at the revision. This is our final lap of preparation before we enter into the examination on Wednesday, May the 26th. So what we're doing in this session today is reinforcement. We're going over some of the topics that we would have looked at before. And we're going to be finalizing all the little preparation that we need to look at before the examination because we would have been well on, well on the way, well on the way with our preparation. So the topic, The topics that we're going to be looking at in verbal reasoning are analogy. Because sorry, I'm late. Classification, essential parts, and artificial language, sequences, Text completion, reading, and logical deduction. We're not going to be looking at all the questions from each of the topic area, but we look at one question from. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. We're going to be looking at one question from each of the topic area. So those are the topics. I'm going to be sharing the topics in the shared notes. These are the topics that the exam will be on. So, sharing that information in the shared notes now. You can download the shared notes as well as you can, can image of it, take a picture of it. All right, so the verbal reasoning questions. Are the right verbal reasoning topics are, as we said, analogy. And that's what we're going to be looking at first. So what is analogy? Analogy is a uh, is identifying a relationship it has to do with identifying a relationship in these types of questions you are going to be given a pair of words initially and from that pair of word you're going to be identifying the relationship between both words and in order for you to complete the next pair of word, words, you will need to identify, use the same relationship that you identified with the first pair of words that are given 
and use that relationship to determine what's the relationship with the next pair of word. So your goal in the exam is to identify the relationship with the first set of words that you are given in this example, there is a relationship between time and clock and that relationship between time and clock, you're going to use that relationship to establish another relationship between temperature and another word. So in the examination, you will choose the word that best complete the pair to establish the same relationship that you can see between time and clock. Sorry. So the first thing we do when we approach these types of questions, as I said, is to identify the relationship between the first two words. So how is time related to clock? Time is related to clock because the clock um, shows the time. Um, yes. So you are going ahead to do it. And so, I'm yes. so what shows temperature? A thermometer. A thermometer. A thermometer. So the missing or the word that is best suited for here is thermometer because thermometer because it establishes the same relationship that clock and time has. All right. So let's look at another question. Yes, miss. Or we can say what tells the time, a clock tells the time, so therefore the thermometer tells the temperature. So let's look at another question. We are looking at the relationship between spider and web. The relationship between spider and web is that the spider lives in the web, while the web is the home of the spider. So for a nest here, we need to find out which one of these options is completing the relationship and providing a similar relationship to spider and web. So from this option, we Bird. can think about what lives in a nest since we know our what the home is whose home is a nest? And we can say that the bird lives in a nest or the bird's home is a nest. So the answer is bird. Yes, yes. And there are some other questions here. However, for time's sake, we're not going to be able to complete those other questions. We're going to move on to the next category, which is classification. Okay. So the next category that you'll be getting in your examination is classification. With these classification questions, you're going to be seeing four words, right? And all of these words are going to be related to one another in some way. However, your goal is to identify the word which is the odd one out or the one that does not fit with the others. To do this, you will have to determine what all the other words have in common and then choose the word that is different, all right? So let's see how all of these words are related. Sneakers, water boot, gloves, and slippers. All of these are related because they're worn on the body, right? Yes, miss. Yes, miss. But which one is more or less related to the others? The gloves. The gloves. The gloves is less related to the others because both, well, not both. Everything you wear on your foot and the yes. gloves you wear on your hand. Yeah, so the sneakers, the water boots, you don't have to shout. The sneakers, the water boots, and the slippers are all worn on the feet. And the gloves is worn on the hand. So that's the other one. Else. Let's look at another question. So we have inch, kilogram, centimeter, and yard. Kilogram. Um, kilogram. So the let's, rest. hold on. Let's it's try measure. to find the relationship first between all of them. The relationship between all of these words are that they're used to measure, right? 
Yeah. However, the kilogram is least similar to the others because the kilogram is used to measure mass while the others are used to measure length. All right? Yes, yes miss. For giving the others, you can utilize the chat instead. I see some of the other students utilizing the chat. Okay, miss. Yes. All right. Let's move on to the next question from the next category. As I said, we will not be looking at all of these questions in detail because I want to complete all the other categories before this session ends. So we're moving on to essential parts and the other type. So this is the other type of question that you're going to be getting on the examination, essential parts. I'm going to be putting this also in the shared notes. It's in essential parts. All right. So in the questions with essential parts, you must identify which part from the given list is an absolute necessity. This means that the word in bold cannot go without this part. Right? Yes, miss. Or it could not work without this part if it's something that's worth working. So we're looking. Students, students, you have to try to minimize the noise in your background. It is the Who is that person? Please mute the microphone, otherwise. Yes, I'm realizing that. I just want to. All right, then. Thomas. So let's look at the television. What is an essential part for the television? A screen because you can't watch a television without a screen. We cannot watch a television without a screen. So this television can go without a remote control because we can manually go there and select the channels. We don't have to have cable because we know that you can watch the regular TV station, TVJ, CBN. And you don't have to have Netflix, but it does need a screen, all right? Yes, miss. Yes, yes miss. So let's look at another question. The hurricane. Oh. The options are flood, wind, rain, or a tsunami. Which one is necessary for it to be a hurricane? A rain. Wind. Wind. Here are the wind. answers in the chat. I'm looking in the chat. Wind. Wind. Someone said rain, but according to the definition of a hurricane, it is heavily gusted wind. So the thing that is most essential to the hurricane, even this one had me for a while, is wind. You don't have to have rain. And when I think about it more, it makes sense because when the hurricane is in process, right? Yes, right. Sometimes that we're not seeing any rain, right? But we're experiencing wind. So we know that therefore it is wind instead of rain, all right? All right. So we are going to move on from essential to the other verbal reasoning topic that we will be getting on the examination, and that is artificial language. So when we look at an artificial language type question, you will need to analyze the words based on an invented or made up language and the rules or patterns that are derived to, to identify the words in this made up, made up language, right? So these rules are patterns are going to help you to figure out or translate the word in these made up languages. All right. So let's look at the example. 
The words in bold come from an artificial language. Examine the meaning of each word and then answer the question that follows. High fun slock means fill up. Mer slock means blue cup and Ross Pock. All right, I'm going to be cursing. What is this? Ross Pock hyphen, I should have spelled it instead, <laughs> means landfill. This word means fill bottler. Let's look at it. So we know slack means cup. Let's highlight it. Because at the end of the word here, it says fill cup. So we can say hyphen means fill and slack means cup. So we're going to highlight slack in yellow. And everywhere we see slack, that means cup. All right? Yes, miss. And from our translation here, we know that hyphen means fill. And we can say that Merck's means blue and Ross Pop means land. So it says which word means fill bottle. So we're looking for something with hyphen since hyphen means fill. And the option we're seeing here is hyphen shimal. So we can assume that shimal is called bottle, but we know that hyphen means fill. So the answer is hyphen shimal. Okay, miss. Yes, miss. Right here. <laughs> It's a another question, and I'm not going. All right, cracking bluff means workforce. So, all right, let's look at the other words before we start highlighting dry tack or dry dry tack cracking means grown work and cracking out it means work please so let's see what is work work is cracking so let's highlight that in an in a color since work means cracking so work is cracking and we're highlighting that in green. And if you realize everywhere we see cracking, we're seeing the translation to be work. So it's workforce, cracking is at the front. Ground work, cracking is at the latter part of the word and workplace cracking is at the front. So is it safe to say that place is alti? I like it in another color. Which word means some place? So we're looking for something with al. So there's two words, or there's three Moral words with alti. So we have alti here, which is a little bit more difficult for us to figure out. And we have alti here. I'm not going to be looking at alti buff because alti. Stop you not Miss Spray. I cannot be Michael. That's this is not Michael again. Michael, I'm going to remove you from the conference if I hear any more noise from your background. I'm serious about that. Cannot be that one person is disturbing the entire conference if I hear another word from your microphone okay you have already been with this all right the problem is already solved all right let's go back to the question so it says 
that alti means play. So in all of these words, we're seeing alti do. But for alti baf, and we know baf means force, right? Because we're seeing here. Hello. Where it says workforce, we're seeing baf after work and we know cracking means work so we can say bluff means force but not only that our t is at the beginning right and we want to see place at the end so we're eliminating bluff our t bluff so it's between more 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 up or more up alti and Drita Alti, that's where we are with Zane. We're narrowing down the answer to B, right? Now for Drita Alti, we know that Drita means brown hair from based on what we're seeing here in the artificial language. When it was translated, we saw that Drita means brown. So we can safely say that Drita Alti means ground place. So we're looking at Marap Alti, and we can say that Marap means some and Alti means place. So the answer is Marap Alti. I hope everyone is following. Yes. All right. So that's the next topic that we will be getting on the examination. I'm writing that in the shared notes. As I said, you can download the shared notes using the arrow once I'm finished, or you can type it over, or you can take an image. Either way, that is most suited to you. All right, let's, let's look at the next type of question, and that's sequencing. So in these sequencing questions, you will need to analyze the pattern, then use that pattern to determine what should be next based on the order that was established, all right? So let's look at the sequence in the yes, example. Which is next in the sequence? So we see CE. F, H, and I, K. And usually some of these sequences are based on the alphabet. So we're going to use this alphabet here below to help us to solve this problem. So C, E, how did they get from C to E? So C, and we skipped one and we're at E. And let's look at F, H, F, and we skip one, which is G, to get to H, and then I, K, we skip J to get to K. So we can safely say for the answer, for the answer, the answer would be L and M. A D should be C. Let's look. So for the skipping, we skip the middle letter between. C and E, but we didn't, and then we started immediately at F, so we didn't skip anything between E and F. And we skipped G, but we didn't skip the I. So we can safely say that we're going to start at the next letter after K, which is L, and we're going to skip M and continue with N. So the answer is L, N. Let's look at this other sequence below. It says, use the alphabet to find the next pair of words, sorry, next pair of letters in the series. So we're using the alphabet once more. Hold on, let me see. Yes, miss. I'm going to do another question because I wanted to do something without the alphabet. But let's finish this question. So AZ, they're using the first 
letter and then the last letter to get A is D. And then D, W. So we're skipping out two letters in the middle. I think I said words. Sorry about that. So we're using the first letter and the last letter in the alphabet. So it's A and then Z. And we're skipping out two letters here, B and C, and continuing with D. So D, and we're skipping out two letters here because I'm using the same pattern that I'm finding out. So we're going to skip Y and X and go to W. And because I'm seeing a pattern where we're skipping out two letters in the middle, I'm going to automatically skip two letters here, E and F, and continue at G. And then I'm going to skip another two letters, B and U. Am I doing the correct thing? Yes. And do C. Look at T. So it's G and T. So I'm going to continue with the pattern that I'm seeing, skipping two letters here and continuing at the beginning and continuing with J. And then I stopped at T here and I'm skipping two letters. S and R and continue with Q. So it's safe to say that in order for us to determine our answer, we need to skip another two letters here, K and L, and start at M from the beginning. And then we stop here at Q. So we're skipping another two letters from the back of the alphabet, P and O, and ending at N. So it's safe to say that the answer is M N. All right. Let's look at another question that has not is not related to the alphabet. So it says, arrange the words given below in a meaningful sequence: word, paragraph, sentence, letters, and phrase. So we know that a word is made up of letters. So it's safe to say that letters will come first and then we'll have word next. So that's four, one. And then the words make up phrases. So we're at five. And phrases make up sentences. So we'll get three afterward. And sentences make up paragraphs. So the answer is four, one five three two five three two four one five three two the answer is b b is your language logical sequence chair wood seed plant tree all right so that's another type of question that will be coming on the examination, sequencing. All right. So that's verbal reasoning. The verbal reasoning topics are analogy classification, essential parts, artificial language sequencing. And we have two more type of question. So we're moving on to, well, three more, text completion. For the text completion type of questions, you're expected to use the context or the context clues to determine the choice of words based on variation in spelling, usage, and meaning. For this example here, we're looking at the variation in spelling. It says, after the fire, the cane field was left. So we know that all of these words are pronounced the same way or they are homophones. Yes. However, the one that is most suited is B-A-R-E. Because that's the one that means nothing is left. This is the mm. one that means leaving something empty. The other is a drink, and the other yeah, is animal. animal. And B A I R. Can anyone tell me what B A I R is? B B 
Sorry, B A I R. Not B A I R. B E. Sorry, B I E R. I'm reading things I'm not seeing. B I E R. Can -E anyone support B A I E R? A -E 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 coffin or a corpse is placed before burial. Oh, the thing they put the coffin on. Yes. The frame, the frame that they put the coffin on, that's the bear. Yes. All right, so let's move on to the next question. With text completion. The dancer tried to dash the movements of its teacher. So this is based on a based on the meaning of these words. This text completion is based on the meaning. So the dancer tried to dash the movement of his teacher exactly, copying every graceful step. Was it plagiarize, interpret, mimic, possess, or refine? So mm -hmm. plagiarize, when we're talking about plagiarizing, it's mostly stealing someone's movement. So although you can plagiarize writing, you can also plagiarize dances as well. But the dancer was not trying to steal the, or to take the teacher's that movement and call it his or her own. So that's not plagiarizing. Um, he wasn't basically interpreting the moves because he or she was not saying what they mean. So that's what interpreting means. For mimicking, we know that that is the copy or follow someone. So we can safely say that the dancer was trying to mimic the movements of his teacher. But let's look at others just to rule those out. Sorry. He was not, or she was not trying to possess the movement of the teacher because they weren't taking and embodying those movements and being controlled by the movement. So that's something that, that's the meaning of possess. And for the dancer to be refining the movements of the teacher, the dancer would be changing up some of the movements that either make them smoother or flow differently. So the dancer was not refining the movement, but just trying to mimic, copying it exactly when you, once you copy everything exactly, similarly to how someone would say that you're um, a monkey, the monkey mimics the move, the dancer was trying to mimic the move of the teacher. All right? Yes, yes. Let's look at the next type of question that can that will come on the examination. Reading. And is the reading passages. So let me put the text completion here in the shared note. And these are from the verbal reasoning category. And these questions will come on the examination. The booklet that we're going through now, it was actually created by the Ministry of Education and they're creating this booklet to let you know what are the type of questions that will come on the examination, all right? Yes, yes. So let's look at the reading, the reading type questions. Let me add it to the chart. In these reading type questions, we are going to be given a passage to answer. Questions at different levels. To answer different you are going to be given a passage, and these passages are going to be containing questions, or there's going to be questions derived from the passage that you need to answer. And basically, from these questions, you're making inferences or you're drawing conclusions. Inferences meaning that you're making an assumption based on what you're seeing in the passage, based on the clues, the context clues that you're giving in the passage, you can make an assumption. Or you're drawing some conclusions. All right, so let's look at the passage. This passage here says, puppies are very small when they are born. They cannot see until they are about two weeks old. During this time, they stay very close to their mothers. And the question says, why do puppies stay close to their mothers? All right, for these type of reason question, in order for us to determine our response, we have to know what type of reason question they are. Reading questions, sorry, they are. And there's four types of reading questions. They are the right there questions where the answer can be found right there in the text. Let me zoom in. There's also the think and search question, which you're making the inferences from. 
So the answer is there in the text, but it may it may not use it may not use the same language that the question uses. And you might have to look in different places to find it. So you have to think very hard and search for it there. You have the author and me questions where the answer is not in the text, but you need to use your use your own background knowledge based on information that you know already and what the author has told you to come up with the answer. And there's the on my own question where the answer is not in the text also, and you will use only your background information that you know to answer the question. So you can answer the question even without reading the text because this question stands alone, all right? Yes, miss. Yes, miss. Fine. In this question, this is a right there question because the answer is right there in the text. It says clearly oh. that puppies will stay close to their mothers because oh. they cannot oh. see. All right. Yes, miss. Let's look at another passage. Right. Okay. This is only one other passage. Devon shouted Mistress Ramsey. I've called you three times. You come down this minute or you'll be late for school. Come in, mommy, he answered. And a moment later, he appeared in the doorway. Mistress Ramsey gasped when she saw him, but Christine barely laughed. I was wondering why you were in the bathroom so long, said his mother. But you surprise me how you comb your hair so slick and your shoes all shine and you even have on a tie. Devon, you sure you're not sick? I can tell you what it, it's all about, mommy, volunteered Chrissy. He met that new girl, Chantel. He and is and she has gagged about her. About her. I am not. Don't listen to her, mommy. I'm just trying to. She's just trying to treat me like a pesky little sister. Devon glared at Chrissy, hoping that his fierce look would scare her into silence. Haha, <laughs> you think you can frighten me, huh? And that isn't even all, mommy. Yesterday, he walked her all the way home and carried her books too. When did this story take so the question is asking when did when this story did... take place? No, it's this right is question. not a right there question because yeah. it's not clearly saying that the story was taking place in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening. However, this is a think and search question because if you look carefully at the passage and search for the answer and think hard so about you it, you can figure out the answer. So the context clue that we're looking at here, and I'm going to be highlighting it, is that you will be his late. mother said that he will be late for Thank school. You. Now we can assume that if he is going to school, then it's in the morning because we typically go to school in the morning. Morning. Yes. It says, which of the following is implied by the passage? And as I said, implied is to make a suggestion or assumption, right? Yes. So what can we assume by reading the passage? That Chrissy was Devon's mother. We're not yeah. assuming that because the passage told us that. No, sorry. Chrissy was not Devon's mother. The passage mm -hmm. told, her, told us that Chrissy was Devon's sister, yes, right? Yes, miss. Yes. Because he said, like a pesky little sister. And Devon he says, like Devon like Chantel. This is not also a right there question because it's not saying there clearly that Devon like Chantel, okay. but the way he slicked his hair and the shined his shoes and put on a tie, we know that he likes Chrissy because he's going to be fixing up himself to go to school yes, to meet Chrissy. Yes. It said also that he is all gaga about her. Yes, and what it means is that he's feeling um 
blushing about her, right? Yes, yes. It yes, also yes. says that he brought her carry her books too. Books and walk her all the way home. So we can safely say that he liked her. Yes, yes. She was afraid of Devon. It clearly said mm -hmm. that she said that he did not scare her to silence or yes. she she's not frightened of him. Of him. So therefore it shows that she was not scared of him. And it didn't say anything about Chrissy being disabled. So that was just going to be an incorrect assumption altogether. All right. Yes, miss. So the other question now, even though it says question four, it's supposed to say three here. So on these reading questions, students, you normally know, get about three or two questions, all right? Okay, Not miss. More. So the last question on this passage says, which word could be used to best describe Chrissy? And we have to look at the word best here. Is Chrissy mischievous? Mm. Yes. Is she angry? Is she playful or jealous? We can eliminate angry and jealous because it doesn't show that she was either. Yes, miss. But we can narrow it down to mischievous or playful. Some would say she's playful, right? But yes. we can look at mischievous closely. At the meaning of mischievous is that somebody is trying to create a little tension or a problem, right? Get you in trouble. So if it was playful, she would have just been playing with her brother, right? But you can see clearly from the sentence that says that she is teasing him. So yes, she teasing him is doing something mischievous, right? It's not playing. He doesn't find it appealing. He doesn't find it funny. Yes, right? Yes, so he's not having joy by what Chrissy is doing. So it is annoying him, right? So yes, she's being mischievous to him, right? Yes, miss. And it is as though she wants her mother to be alarmed or to, for him to get in some form of trouble. So she keeps reminding her mother about the things that he's doing. So that is mischievous, all right? Yes, miss. So it's safe to say that the word that best describes Chrissy is mischievous. Mischievous. And the final type of question that will be coming that on verbal reasoning deduction. is the logical deduction. With these logical deduction questions, students, are simply a combination of you are going to be seeing a set of information, and your goal is to come to a conclusion. And when we talk about a logical conclusion, logic means it makes sense. So your conclusion must make sense based on the the information that you're given before right this is not something easy to do so in order for you to make a correct this deduction you need to take your time and be patient and sometimes you have to read over the statements more than once so you can see what is taking place you can also put yourself in the situation if it's a case where it is possible for you to put yourself in the situation, all right? Yes, miss. So let's look at the example. So it further says that um, it helps if you can put yourself in the situation. So instead of boy or mother, you can call it your own name or your mother's own name. So you can feel more closer to the situation and be able to make a more accurate deduction, right? So let's yes, look at yes. the example. Guitars belong to a class of stringed instruments. Yes, miss. And we want to spend close attention or to spend adequate time on each question each statement before answering the question. So we want to read over the statement just to be clear that guitars belong to a class of string instruments. So guitars are instruments and they are string. Oh, Violins and guitars are expensive, okay? And then it says violin and guitars are both in the same class of instruments. Something I want you to know to students is that there's going to be a statement that's going to be throwing you off because it wants you to 
pay close attention. There is going to be a statement there that is not necessary and it's going to be there throwing you off. And this statement where it says violence, violence and guitars are expensive, it has, any, it has nothing to do with the cost of the violin yes, or sir. the guitar, right? This is the yes. sentence that's throwing you off. Mm. It is mainly talking about what class of and instruments the violins and the guitar come from, and that is string instrument because it said there initially that violin, sorry, guitar belongs to the class of string instruments. So if violins and guitars are from the same class, then violins are also string instruments. All right, so that's the answer. It's not about how expensive they are. All right. Yes, miss. Let's look at another example. And I want you to try to look at the sentence that is throwing you off. Okay. So the statement says, all chickens are birds. Some chickens are hen. Male birds do not lay eggs. If all the statements above are true, which statement must be true? Hens are birds. All birds lay eggs. Some chickens are not in. Um, some, oh, miss, all, all birds lay eggs. No, miss, some chickens are not hens. No, some chickens are not no I hens. mean, I'm, I said to throw off a question. I was, that one was and not. three, miss. It'd be one and one three. And three. Yeah, okay. so hens are birds because we said that some chickens are hens. <laughs> and we know that all chickens are birds, right? So there's not so much of a throw off statement here. It's just that you have to pay close attention. All right. That's what I was going to say. That's why I took the pause there because I wanted to see if there was really a sentence that was going to throw you off. Yes, miss. But this is something that you just need to pay close attention to. So firstly, it says all chickens are birds, right? So whether it be hen or any other birds. Sorry, whether it be hen or rooster there all of the chickens are birds right yes miss so we know this statement must be true because if a hen is a chicken it is a bird right and it yes. says two chickens are hen and then says that male birds do not lay eggs we can safely say that there's a difference between the hen and the male bird because they would have said hens do not lay egg so they're talking about a different type of bird which is not yes, the hen right yes miss so it says all birds lay egg. Miss, um, male birds does not lay eggs. But it does say up here that male birds do not lay eggs. So this cannot be true. Yes, miss. And it says some chicken are not hens. And we can safely say that some chicken are not hens because, as I said, it would mention again here that male birds do not lay eggs. Yes. Right? It would have just said hens don't lay eggs, right? So we yes. can say that yes. some are. Hen and some are not hen. And it says here that some chickens are not hen. So if some are hens, then some must be something else, right? Yes, miss. Yes, miss. So we can safely say the answer is hens are birds and some chickens are not, I'm not hens. So one and three is the answer. Yes, miss. And we're not going to look at the other type of question because I'm going to move on to the quantitative reasoning question. Why the fish? I upload the next book. Like, so those are the types of question. Let me put logical reasoning here. Logical or logical deduction. So those are the types of questions that will be coming from the verbal reasoning category. All right. Yes, miss. There's another type of question or another type of topic called the quantitative reasoning. So if you notice, student, this one was mainly dealing with language arts, right? Yes, miss. So these are the language arts type of questions, which are sorry, from verbal reasoning. Now we're looking at the mathematics type questions, which are quantitative one, T. Quantitative reasoning. In a second, I'm bringing up the next picture. 
I hope everyone is clear on the types of questions that will be coming on the examination. At the end of the session, I'm also going to be sharing some links that will help you to practice from all the different categories, all right? Yes, yes. All right, we go to the booklet. I should have it somewhere here in my history. Yes, yes. Yes. All right. So the different categories from the quantitative reasoning questions are patterns representing quantities, comparing quantities, uh -huh. And we're comparing and representing quantities using tables and graphs and approximation, ex estimation, which is basically rounding off, and data analysis, which is also using tables and graphs. You can either compare quantities, you can also compare quantities using fractions and decimals or ratios and you have problem solving which are the general worded problems all right so let's look at the quantitative reasoning type questions so we did not get a total breakdown as we would with the verbal reasoning question However, I am going to be pointing out which category these questions fall from. And we're only going to be, we're not going to be doing all 20 questions, but we're going to be doing the first, first 10 questions. All right, so these are the quantitative reasoning question. It says, which is the odd word below? So we're looking at mean, mode, multiple, and median. We know that mean, mode, and median are all arithmetic means, right? They're dealing with statistic. Multiple is separate and apart from these words because it is not dealing with statistic. And that word is the odd one out. It is a bit similar to... The Before. the verbal reason where it looks at the odd one out, but it is falling in quantitative reason because it has to do with mathematical terms. All right. Let me share the different topics first before. <laughs> Make sure these topics in the, if you want to, you can go ahead and take a picture of it from the screen. Also, I'm going to be writing it in the shared note. You can download it. Pattern representing quantities. Presenting quantities. Comparing quantities. Comparing quantities, approximation, and data analysis, and problem solving. All right, let's go back to the questions.
All right, it says nine times a variable X and five times a longer variable Y results in 62. What pair of war, what pair of values of X and Y will satisfy this expression? So we can say nine times what plus five times what will give us 62. We can try the answers here. That's the easiest way to approach the problem. However, we can try to make a plan to solve the problem. So once we understand the question, so the question says nine times a variable X. So we know that nine times X plus five times another variable Y will give you 62. So we can say, if we say nine times nine, nine times nine is already greater than 62. So we know that A could not be the answer. Nine times five is 45, but five times nine is also 45. And if we add 45 and 45, it will not be equal to 62. So we can eliminate both A and B. Nine times four is 36. And five times five is 25. So we can add 36 to 25 to see if it equals to 62. 30 plus 20 is 50 and 50 plus 5 is 11. So that will be 61 instead of 62. So we can also eliminate C. Nine times three is 27, and 27. seven times five is 35, and 27 plus 35 equals 62. So D is the yes, correct answer. Let's look at the next question. It says, imagine a flag with three vertical stripes, one red, one white, and one blue. How many different flowers can you imagine without repeating the colors? This question is a tad bit tricky. Miss, I understand it. All right, it seems as though you want to provide an explanation. You can go ahead. All right, so Miss, this says, imagine a flag with three vertical stripes, one red, one white, and one blue. Okay, so first thing you're going to do, you're going to write down um, how many um, or how many colors you can get. You can get um, you have red, white, and blue. You have so that's one flag. Yeah, you can red, have one flag red, with three right. colors, right? Yes, miss. You have red, blue, and white. Then you're going to have blue, red, and white. <laughs> Hold on a second, Michael. Aren't you repeating the colors? Huh? Aren't you repeating the colors? Repeating the colors. No, Miss, because the last time I went on YouTube, this is the same way the teacher taught. Mm. So I'm repeating the no, Miss, I'm not repeating the colors. You're switching up the colors in different places. Yes, Miss. Okay. And Fair then enough. you of white, blue, and red, and white, red, and blue. When you count up all of the One colors, second, Michael, I'm going to allow you to write it on the screen, okay? Right. All right, go ahead and write on the screen, Michael. You should be able to write on the screen now. So, the first thing you're going to have is red. I'll get off the screen. And Red, white, and blue. All right, so that's one flag. Yes. Then you can also have red, blue, red, blue, and white. Yes. 
and then you can also have blue, red, and white. So that's three flags thus far. Yes, then blue, white, then red. Okay, four flags. Then white, blue, then red, then white, red, then blue. That's our solid color. Fair enough. Does anybody have any other explanations? So that would have been six. That's your answer, Michael? Yes, miss. All right, fair enough. Does anyone have any other explanation? No, miss. I left it out first, but then it was the explanation that you did before. Repeat. Then you... So, miss, first I did it all the way Michael did it, but then you explained it a different way. All right, go ahead. Okay, would you like to share that explanation? Um, sure, miss. I'm going to clear the screen. You can write on the screen. Just write it below what Michael wrote or above. Don't erase what he has. Well, I have the ability to do that. Michael, do not erase what you have. Just All right, go ahead. Are you able to write on the screen? Maybe. Yeah. All right, because of time constraint, we really do have to move on. So is it safe to say that Michael's explanation is correct? Does everyone agree? Is everyone following? So we didn't repeat the colors here, however, we shift them into different places, all right? Red, white, blue, red, blue, white. Blue, red, white, blue, white, red. White, blue, red. White, red, blue. Okay, fair enough. Yes. All right. So it's safe to say that we have six different colors or six different flags. Let's go back to the document that we were working. The next question says, imagine some colored blocks are laid out in a row. Three red, two blue, three red, two blue, and so on. So this is a pattern question, right? Yes, miss. How many blocks will be in the ninth position? So I'm going to be sharing the screen again, and some another person can come on the screen and demonstrate. Go ahead. Does anybody want to demonstrate? You said I didn't finish reading the question. All right, let me go back to the question. No shouting, Michael. This was shouting. Oh, you talk loud like that all the time? No. <laughs> all right. Imagine some colored blocks are laid out in a row. Three red, two blue, Three blue, sorry, I'm reading what I'm seeing. Three red, two blue, three red, two blue, and so on. So the pattern is three red, two blue. All right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I get it. And the answer. So let's look at it. Let's write. All right, let's make two money. Let's do it. Amanda, you're on the screen. Go ahead. Oh, no, Miss. Um, I was trying. I have two 
Miss, I wasn't, I wasn't tasting anything. I know, that's fine. I'm just joking. Because you, you... Miss, I would do it. Go ahead, Margo. It, it would be nice if you use the different colors, Margo. Miss, so they say three red at first. Yes, go ahead with the three red. Yes. Two, Two blue. Three. Try another color. Use the blue, Marco. Use the blue. Change the color from red to blue. Can I change the color? Oh, yes, I can. Yes, you can. No, for the next word. Oh, everything is going to be changed. All right, fair, fair enough. That's fine. Okay, miss. Go ahead with the same color. Three red, two blue. Yes. Three red, two blue. Three red. So this is the first blue. place. This is the second place. Third place. Continue. I'm not seeing it. We're not seeing it, Marco. We're not seeing it because you need to extend the bar a little bit longer. Okay. So start with a bigger. Start with a longer bar. Start it like this. So when you're writing, start it from over here to the end. All right, so you can see everything holding. Are you seeing what I'm doing on the screen, Marco? Yes, miss. Yes, yeah, so I do it like that. All right, great. Yes, yeah, so you can write it. Very good. Eight. You say eight or nine? Nine. So that's one, two, three. Put it in a row, Marco. I want it in a row. Okay, you're finished. Three, four, five. Two, not the red, blue, seven, red, blue, red. Eight, nine. So, what is in the nine place is a three, right? Is everyone seeing that? Yes, miss. Yes. So, the answer is. This is very similar. Three red, two blue, three red, two blue, and so on. If there are 65 color blocks, how many would be red? Give our clean screen. So let's get to 65 blocks. So there's three and two. Miss, that's five. Three. Repeat. Miss, I can do it. All right, go ahead. Miss so make sure you have enough space. All right. So so far we have three plus three. Six plus three, twelve plus. Miss, you can add them up out of five, Miss. Repeat. Oh, you're adding the fives first to get it to sixty-five. All right, fair enough. Go ahead, Mark. Mark, I'm afraid you're writing too big. Will you have sixty-five? All right, you're using all the corners. All right, fair enough. So I do not mark on my board. 20, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. And Martha, you found out a very easier way to do it by just adding the files. I didn't even think about that, Marco. Very good. Miss. So that's 65 now. Let's count the three now, Marco. 
Miss, miss no is three times three do no miss. Three times? Three times. Three times one is three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty one. 24, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36, and the last one is 39. So it'll be 39 red miss. Very good. Also, Marco, because you showed me an easier way to do the fives. If I think about it, I could count it and say if there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, I could just multiply thirteen times three and I will get thirty-nine. Is everyone Mister, following? Mr. So how did you know that was going to the as Marco finish? All right, sorry about that, man. Yes, so that the correct answer is 39. All right, yes, let's nice. move on to number six. It says, likely is to probability as unknown is to, and we still see the analogy questions coming out here. However, it is miss, um, miss, quantitative I... reasoning. Hold on a second, my Michael. You can go ahead once I finish the explanation. However, it's quantitative reasoning because all of these words are mathematical. All right, go ahead now, Michael. All right, so Miss, this likely is the probability. Prob probability means, um, all right, so just like you have two red, one blue, and two three white. The probability of having to pick white, um, so you're the out of every single thing, and then you'll get, um, We'll get six. So out of six, it would be three out of six to find white. So no, that means likely. So that means you find so unknown means algebra. Because you're trying to find the unknown. So I pick algebra D. Yes. Good. Very good, Michael. Very on point explanation. So when you're talking about probability, you're talking about the likelihood of choosing something, right? Or the likelihood of something happening. Similarly, when we're talking about algebra, we're looking for the unknown, all right? Very good. Let's move on to number seven. It says, Bob has a shoe store. What statistical term should he consider when buying shoes? Think about this long and hard students. I know the answer. All right. But I don't want Marco or Michael to give me an answer. I want somebody else in the class to provide okay, me. No. I think he should use um hmm. I'm coming. Okay. So when he's buying the shoes, he's thinking about using using a statistic term. Which term would he use? Are you ready, Amanda? Come in, Miss. Does anyone other than Michael and Michael want to have this under? Okay, I'm seeing some answers in the chat. Zoran, you said mode. Why is it the mode? Unmute the microphone and try to provide an explanation. Why is it mode, Zoran? No. Zoran? Um, all right, Amanda, Zorn said mode. Can you explain why Zorn would say mode? Uh, miss mode is um because um it's what, some what it's is um, mode? 
Miss Mode is um when a number occurs the most in a sequence. Yes. Um. Well, maybe we would use that for the clothes, which comes most. No, no, clothes are shoes. Comes most. Yes. Yes. Why would the shoe store, the person who, why would Bob want to use the mold by the I shoes mean, that is being occurring most? Wow. I know why he said pick mold because it's a mold. It means the most popular. And normally people would buy the most popular shoes in, town, uh, in the place. So I pick mold. Yes. So yes. Bob is looking at the mode when he's buying the shoes because he wants to buy the shoes that will the shoes that is selling most, right? And if he was supposed to do a survey on the shoes that sell or the shoes that sold the most, he would consider the mode. Is everyone following? Yes, miss. Yes, miss. All right, let's move on to number eight. It says Sam scores the following on five of his mathematics tests: 95, 80, 90, 70, sorry, 90, 90, and 70. His score on the six mathematics tests was 95. Which of the following will Miss, can not I change? Go Miss ahead. Anders. Miss, um, the median will not change. Why will the median not change? Miss, because um, me, um, Miss, um, Miss Median means Miss Median means um, the one is in the middle. Yes. Oh, yes. When the others, uh, you have to do something to get the answer. All right. But, fair enough. But Amanda, I want to ask you now, though, if you have five numbers, you know that ninety is in the middle, right? Yes, Miss. Because we have 95 and 80 on one side and 90 and 70 on the other side. If you add another number, will 90 still be in the middle? No, no miss. We'll no, miss. No, no, miss. Miss. Um, you have to right. add the All at once, that. I don't like the shouting so much. People miss, you would have to them. add the numbers and then divide it by the um by the number um the amount of no, no, numbers amount that of is number. there. Yeah. Add and divide by two. Adding 90 plus 90 and dividing it by two. The number is two. So because there's two of them, 90 and 90, we're dividing it by two. So when we add 90 plus 90 is 180. And when we divide 180 by two, we still get back 90. So the median will not change. Fair enough? Yes, miss. Yes, miss. The mode will change because we know we'll have 95 and 90 being the most occurring and the mean will change because when we add them all up and divide them by the total amount of number it will change the mean and we said that multiple is this there as a distraction honestly excuse me miss yes um when you have two when you have a mode and then you add another number and you have the same amount the most would the bigger number be the mode because it's like in this in this situation there's two nineties and two ninety fives would it ninety five be the most because it more mode because it's the most no mode is not about the most the higher number it's the most occurring number so both of them would be the mode 95 would be the mode and also 90 would be the mode because both of them are occurring the same amount of times all right okay miss. Yes. all right for number nine this is a pattern question or a sequence yes. question. it says which number best completes the sequence below 36. All right. Why is 36 going to be the number that will complete the sequence? Okay, miss. So, yeah, I have 181. So, miss, you are going to take um 81 from 100, and then you're going to get... Hold on a second, Amanda. I want you to look back at the sequence and identify the pattern. Me, what is the pattern that is taking place? 
Yes, they were I taking know. away nineteen. No shouting. I do not want shouting. We are taking away nineteen. Are we taking away nineteen? Yes, miss. Nineteen. Nineteen. Miss. 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 Too many, too many persons are speaking, and as a result, I cannot listen to anyone. Yes. Saniki, you are saying something? Yes, please. Um, Go ahead, Saniki. They are square numbers. Thank you very much, Saniki. The pattern that I'm seeing, I'm not sure if there's another pattern there. I'm going to be exploring what Amanda was saying shortly. But what I can see vividly because these are squared numbers. So, so the square root, sorry, the square root of a hundred is ten, or Saniki was in ten squared is a hundred. The square root of eighty-one is nine, or nine squared is eighty-one. The square root of sixty-four is eight, or eight squared oh, yeah. is sixty-four. The square root of 49 is 7, or 7 squared is 49. And complete it now, Saniki. And then the square root has to be 36. So the square root of 36 is 6. Or Very good. So the oh. next squared number, because we're seeing the squared being counting numbers from 10, 9, 8, 7, we can assume that the next square number is going to be the square of six so we can say 36 because 36 is a square number four six miss i had a different way of finding that pattern go ahead this first one it takes away 19 and then it takes away 17 it takes away 15 and then finally so we 13. So yes yeah, that i think that's what amanda was saying that's what you were saying amanda. yeah well, yes, i guess i was trying to say that yes it's decreasing by unknown large yes students for pattern questions there's various ways of finding the pattern it's just what you're seeing right because even for questions that i have created i have created it using a certain pattern and i've seen students find three different patterns that i didn't know existed all right all right let's look at number 10 the final question although it has three parts so we're going to be completing all three parts so it says that I am, um, excuse me, please. I have heard what you're saying. I know exactly what you're saying. I do. All right, miss. Are we on the next question? All right. Okay. Tell me, A would be true. Miss? It says all numbers end with Sorry about that. It says all numbers, all odd numbers end with either one, three, five, seven, or nine. Okay, miss. That is asking true. If somebody in specific or it is asking the book. You're saying something wrong? Because I, I never heard, I never heard, so I was asking if you were asking somebody in specific or just like the whole class. I wasn't asking anyone specific. Anyone that decided okay. to answer was, would have asked. Excuse me, miss. May I answer? Do you remember that existed? Yes, it does. All right. All right, miss the next. All right, go ahead. Um, Miss True or False, or false. All odd numbers end with one, three, five, seven, or nine. True, true, true. All right. Why is it true, Amanda? Miss, because um, 
miss um 11 is an odd number 21 is an odd number and so on Correct. miss thir yeah 13 is an odd number 23 is an odd number and so yeah. on and all of those end with either three or five or seven yes, or nine. Yes. Fair i'm looking for one word though or not one word but a distinctive thing that will tell me that these numbers are odd can somebody tell me the main characteristics of an odd number it's not divisible by two thank you very okay. much yes so all of these numbers are not divisible by two and that's why they're odd numbers all right and hence any number that ends with these numbers are not going to be divisible by two and that's why those are odd numbers all right as it will give you yes. a remainder of one or or very good yes It will give you a remainder of one. One, yeah, one. Yeah. All right, let's look at the next statement. It says, outcomes are always fair. Is that true or false? Oh, uh, Mrs. False. False. All right. Can anyone tell me other than Amanda? Marco, Michael, and Rona. Why Amanda said outcomes always are always fair. That is called Carl, you have to go ahead. And to probability, probability. Because outcomes would be the denominators are what the likes, what likely it would become. But um, outcomes would not always be. Michael, Michael, don't start your own class in my class. All right, go ahead, um, Marco, since no other student wants to try, and we really need to wrap up the session. Go ahead, Marco. Outcomes not always fear, because a kid can study first test, I want to the test he can feel. Okay, fair you know. Um, and that's unfortunate, right? Yes, very unfortunate. Yes, very unfortunate. Thank you very much, Amanda. All right, Amanda, why did you say it was not fair? Uh, miss, because um, miss. Oh, why did I say it was not fair? All right. <laughs> this is how what is said, but I just don't know to put it up my own words. Rona, in our private class, you gave an answer. Do you want to go ahead? Yes, miss. Okay. Um, outcomes are not always fair because in life there is an outcome to everything and it's not always just or right. So outcomes are not always fair. All right, fair enough. Everyone provided an reasonable explanation. Yeah, so we can say that is not a true statement, all right? Not every outcome is there. People end up in um, fights or whatever it might be and somebody dies, that's not fair, right? But that's the outcome. Yes, it will happen. All right, let's look at the last question that we're looking at today. It says graphs are only used in mathematics class. Is that Miss true? False. 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 I'm sure we've seen graphs in science class and social so studies class, right? Yes. Yes. Language yes. class. And language, language class. class as well. So pretty much every class uses graphs, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, miss. All right, students, that's where we end our session today. And that's where I'll be seeing... This is where I'll be seeing Ooh. most of you before the examination on Wednesday. I wish you all the best. I know that you have all been assiduously preparing for the examination. And I know most of you are well on the way for the preparation. If you have any other concerns or queries, reach out to me. If there is a paper that you're doing on your own and you're not quite sure about the answer, you can Suggest the answers to me. I suggest the question to me and I can provide a response. All right. I know Saniki did that today and I was able to provide her with a response. For the videos and the resources I would have shared, continue to practice, practice, practice. Look, students. 
this is our final little pep talk before the examination and I really want to ingest these things. I would have said this to your parents, but I'm speaking to you one-on-one -on -one now, or one to many. On this Thursday, which is the 27th of May, you can call that National Student <laughs> Holiday, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. yes, we can all sleep from the 27th to the 28th, to the, the entire month. We can sleep from the 27th to the end of the month, right? Tell your yes, parents that Miss Bowen said you should sleep today because you have work. Yes. yes. And when the results come, those who need to book into Ocean Springs, Rio, all the different yes, yes. hotels, yes, who need to be traveling to Florida, Atlanta, Toronto, Italy, whatever it might be, students, London. The work will be properly rewarded for, right? With that, that phone. yes, tell her. You hear that, mommy? You hear that, mommy? <laughs> that is? Yes, and also, as I said, no matter what you want to do after the 27th, if you want to take up your book and say, Mommy, look at me, I study, me, I study, me, I study, me, I study. The 26th will not, the 27th, sorry, will not matter. Yes, Kyle says London, Cuba, Spain, anywhere you want to go, right? If you study on the 27th, on the 28th, on the 29th, it will not contribute towards your grade. What that means is that for the four days we have remaining, you need to leverage that time, right? Monday is a total lockdown day. What means that you must lock down and focus on your book. Lock in your book, right? Yes, miss. Yes. It will not matter what you want to do after the 26th. All that matters now is before the examination. And it doesn't matter if you're not completely prepared now. If you put in enough effort, the four days, you can get enough effort preparation in right and we would have just gone through the different topics that will come on the examination i said that i was going to share the notes students if you put in enough work from now you will be able to improve it doesn't matter somebody tells me all the time when i'm going in the examination that no looking at your book man that can't help you even right outside of the, the classroom door i'm there <laughs> yes, it will help. Two minutes yeah. before the class, it will help. As you're going there, write it down on the paper. Yes, this is what I just took in. This is what I just remembered, right? And you write it down there. Time. Right? So, any preparation before the examination is okay. After the examination, it will not matter. Put in all the effort, students. Exhaust yourself. Trust me, it is not the the most desired thing to be under pressure but if you learn to tolerate pressure from now when you go into the work world you will survive because you have to meet deadlines and you have to be under pressure yeah, with that yeah. said put in the work students i cannot urge enough i've taught all of you at some interval and i know you have the capability to go into the examination and do well i want you to put your best foot forward that is the only thing that will help you in it's time for the examination, right? And I'm glad for the students who stayed here and listened to the pep talk to say that you already have this one. Trust me. It's just to continue preparing, continue putting your best foot forward, continue paying attention to the details, continue following all the things that we spoke about, all of the things that your teacher spoke about at school and to bring it all home, all right? So yes, again, download the shared notes here. Those are the topics that will be coming on the examination. The ministry cannot bring another topic than these ones here, right? And if you know these topics, and as good researchers, we're living at age that you can touch your phone, touch your tablet, touch your laptop, and anything will come up, right? If you look, in, if you type in analogy, grade six analogy questions, you must see something on YouTube. Download it and practice. I would have shared enough resources and I want you to use them. If I'm sharing some more resource now and you have been familiar with these websites and they're still valid, they still do work and it's the stuff.
So the other website, a big website that we use, it has the notes and it has the questions. Now you cannot finish the questions from the study other website. Try as you may, there's so much. The Sawal website, even more. There's 20 odd pages or more of so if you look at logical deduction on the study other website or the Sawal website, sorry, you cannot finish the questions there. Try as you may. Page one, page two, all the way to probably page 200 and something with different questions on each page. Do as much questions as possible students. You want to maximize on the time you have now and leverage it to go into the examination. We have another website, indiabix.com. That's also a website that you can use. Those three websites are full of mental ability questions. Use them up, students. I'm going to be sharing these three booklets or these two booklets that we used in our session today. There's another third booklet. If you don't have the booklets, please just reach out to me. Let mommy or daddy reach out to me on WhatsApp and I'm going to be sharing those booklets with you. And I want you to go through the booklets and put in enough practice, as I said, on Thursday, the 27th of May is National Grade 6 holiday, Grade 6 students holiday. So you can take the time and rest. Tell your parents, I said you should sleep the whole day. But until then, you should be working assiduously around the clock and I've learned a little thing, right? I even do jogging in the morning. I jog on the hill in the morning. And sometimes I am so tired. I want to fall down literally. And I tell myself, we're not that tired. Continue going. And I continue going. And I jog and I jog. And when I look, I reach home. Jog all the way home. Yes. And even something that I do when I'm preparing the booklets that you use or the tests or anything, even now, I'm kind of tired. I've been in classes from 10 o'clock. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to trick my brain. Yes, and tell my brain I'm not that tired because I have Rona, Amanda, and Marcus <laughs> pay for to mark and give them the results by tonight, right? Okay, I'm going to trick myself. Yes, and mark the papers and send them to you. Look and see if you're not going to get the results tonight. So you control yourself. And even if you're, you're feeling a little bit tired, just tell yourself you're not really that tired. And you will see how much hours you're working after. And you wonder, was it me that said I was tired three hours ago? You're not really that tired. And you sleep every night. So what if you, sleep? What if you really spend a little bit more time tonight? And practice, right? Dismiss. Yes, every night you sleep. You can't be that tired. You're not doing rigorous work and, and building house and lifting blocks. Yes, so you're really not that tired. You just that like, you tell yourself that boy, I'm tired. So I'm gonna go sleep. Tell yourself tonight you're not really that tired. And if you used to go to your bed eight o'clock, do an extra hour. Do an extra two hours if you can put yourself. Yes, have a snack, something to eat, make a sandwich after this session here. Don't go to your bed. No. Get a snack, get a sandwich, and go to the website and do some practice. At least two hours more practice on the website. And if you do that every night, you cannot see a question in the examination that you're not going to be able to handle. Trust me. I had a student last year. I'm not sure if you are aware of him because he would have been on my YouTube channel. Oh, yes, I love heat. And I cannot stop talking about this student. He's at Wilmer's. Yes, he used to be in my school. He yes. was in my school. St. Peter's and Paul, yes. And he's actually doing CXE mathematics in grade seven. Can you believe that? And I do know he will pass. We're actually get, trying to get him to a grade one, but I already know that he has a grade three already or a grade two. And he was so receptive, no matter what I told Tyler to do last year, he was just there. All right, Miss, I'm going to do this. Miss, I did the 60 question. Miss, I did the 40 question. Miss, you have any more questions? And I'm like, oh, my word. And he got his first choice. And I know if he wanted to go to champion, he would have gone to champion. He got 100% in the ability test. And there was nothing that he saw on the paper that he could not do. 
Yes. Simply because he did all of this practice, right? So I know Ms. that. Go ahead. Miss Boyne, but when Tala was at the school, Tala says first choice was JC. That's what you tell me. Oh, well, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure what the conversation that you had with him. But um, what I'm aware of is that his first choice was Wolfman. I'm going to clarify that. But as I said, he was receptive. I think that's the part of the question, um, the part of the story that I wanted to bring across mostly, that he was receptive to the information that I was giving him, right? So I want you to put your best foot forward as again, um, continue to practice, and I know that you will do well, and I know that the ministry will not be able to bring a question that you're not going to be able to manage, all right? Yes, With that yes. said, um, are there any questions or concerns? Oh, miss. Okay. Oh, if yes. there are no questions or concerns, that's where we end the session for today. Enjoy the remaining of your afternoon or night. Yes. 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 And you. I wish yes, you miss. all the best on your examination. And as I said, I know that most of you already have the examination in the bag but if you feel as if you are not quite there as yet just continue to put in the work and you should be there by Wednesday okay until then I wish you all the best and take care bye thank you miss and I hope you all do the best also bye, thank miss. you very much thank you very bye, much bye bye humans. bye uh, adios adios au revoir Miss, I'm just Ciao. Miss, I'm just realizing that me and Marco go to the same school and I knew his name, you know, Miss. I'm like, oh my God, how am I just guys in this? Well, every day you learn something new. So consider that something new you learned today, all right? Okay, thank you, Miss. All right, then. Bye. Take care. Bye, Miss. Adios. You boy. Adios. Adios. New buena. buena. What's the, what language is that? Spanish, miss. It's still Spanish for what? All right.